Hey everyone, Minty Beck here with Teddy Covers. Every week we've done a betting 101, 102 show to help you guys become better bettors and give you advice on strategies on how to sports bet and how to bet on particular sports. These have been super informative videos and really help people who want to improve on their betting skills as well as learn how to make better and more informed wagers. This week is going to be a popular topic because I see this question get asked every single day. How will COVID affect your handicapping? Truly, we've never seen anything like this, Teddy, and we've never seen sports completely shut down before. So this is a new time for us and a learning process as we go. Teddy has taken the time to jot down 10 tips he believes will help for capping during COVID. Hi, Teddy. How are you? Hey, Minty. How are you? And look, uh, I mean, let's be very clear about this. All right. The answer is you don't don't know. I don't know. The odds makers don't know. The bookmakers don't know. The wise guys don't know. There's going to be a learning curve here. So what I tried to do for today's video, Lawrence? Yes. So okay. then why are you interrupting me when I'm talking and no one can hear you? <laughs> yes, Prez, we're getting volume. I'm on the, the YouTube and we're getting volume. Oh, Lawrence. Okay. I'm sorry. Teddy, Where were proceed. we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. The idea, the voice in your ear, Lawrence, when you're actually doing a live broadcast is you say something concisely, quickly, and out. Not, hey guys, let me tell you about what's going on. You say, we're not on air. And I go, okay, we're not on air. Or stop, or talk louder. Something I can understand. But if you're trying to actually have a conversation with me, when I'm trying to have a conversation with the people that are in, <laughs> in the chat and watching the show, it becomes a little bit difficult. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, now, where were okay, we? You, you were saying it was a learning curve for all of us, and that's where you well, were talking. No question. I mean, the concept of coming into the current environment in mm -hmm. 2020, where in theory, we're going to have baseball, we're going to have hockey, we're going to have basketball, and we're going to have football, all to bet on, all within the next, what, six, seven weeks? Yeah. In, in theory. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna, we're, we're going to concentrate on today is... A, what the market's going to be looking at, B, what bettors are going to be looking at, and C, what I'm going to be looking at in the post-COVID betting world or betting during COVID or however you want to uh, uh, label it. The concept here is what tips can we do that are broad enough that we can say, I don't know anything about the specifics, but I know enough about the generalities of betting on sports, betting on sports with injury uncertainty, et cetera, et cetera. We'll see if you can give us some good tips uh, for today. The yeah. bottom line is, but this isn't one of these where I've done it 50 times before and I can eat, you know, I know exactly how long today's podcast is going to take or, uh, you know, it's one of these deals where I wrote this out. This is what I'm thinking. Let's see if I can present it uh, in an appropriate manner and hopefully we'll give you guys some good info. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to Elliot Guitar Rat, who joined us yesterday, and Brian. Thank you guys for joining in. Again, this is Teddy's top 10 tips for capping during COVID. We love alliterations here, okay? So, Teddy, <laughs> give us tip number one, if you could, please. I do. I've always been an alliteration fan. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, Teddy's <laughs> top 10 tips goes for it, and capping during COVID goes for it. So, yeah. what I, this is a betting 101. It's in the betting 101 category. This is not a true beginner betting video, okay? <laughs> um, it's more like a 200 level or a 300 level class uh, <laughs> or lecture. Uh, that said, you know, it's betting 101s that we're doing and this is about top 10 t tips for capping during COVID. So let's start with what happens in the normal world, all right? How do lines get set? How do the mm -hmm. markets adjust to the lines being set? The markets set the lines based on basically five factors in a normal world. There are statistical po profiles. We call them power ratings. It's a, it's a, it puts a numerical rating for every team. There are betting profiles as well. This team gets a ton of support. This team doesn't get any support. This team's going to get public money. The wise guys have been pounding this team. So the profiles of the various teams, along with the statistical profiles, come into play. There's always home field advantage that you factor in. There are always injuries, in theory, that you factor in, as well as the situation slash spot that gets factored into the line, at least modestly. You know, a team that's playing uh, in a sandwich situation, they play a uh, tough game last night and a tough game in their next game, and they have a letdown spot here. The situation and the spot definitely factored in at least a little bit. So 
statistical profiles, betting profiles, home field advantage, injuries, and the situation spot. And that's basically the five factors that are included in every point spread or money line or anything like that. So that's the normal way, the normal uh, where the markets are going to set the numbers. Hmm. Okie dokie. And I just want to give a shout out to Shane from Dublin, Ireland, as well as Faith and Chuck. Thanks so much for joining us today. Teddy, I know about NFL, but really quick, this guy has a question and he asked yesterday too, so I might as well. Shane asked, is Chase Young Redskins value price at two to one for a defensive rookie of the year about right for you? Two to one defensive rookie player of the year. I expect. I would say he is the most likely player to win defensive, the most likely rookie to win the award. That said, okay. when you're talking about a wager where you're getting paid two to one on mm-hmm. a season long bet with an infinite number of other candidates, I will yes. never, never say that's a value bet. I don't okay. uh, It's not anything that would even come close to getting in my pocket. All right. Thank question. you, Teddy. Yes. Thank you, guys. All right. Moving on to number two, Teddy. So we talked about the normal world, all right, well, how markets are set. I want to talk about the, the stats. I talked about statistical profiles, betting profiles, home field advantage, injuries, and situation spot. I'm going to talk about the stats in particular okay. that are enormously predictive of what the betting markets are going to react to these teams. For football, we're talking about turnover margin, plus minus. We're talking about yards per play gained on offense, and yards per play allowed on defense. We're talking about red zone success rate. We're talking about the pace of play, you know, uh, seconds per play, uh, drives per game, et cetera, et cetera. When you're talking about totals, that's a big factor. For baseball, the key stats, all about starting pitching. Rays accepted. Uh, strikeout to walk ratio, FIP, fielding minute pitching, or uh, XFIP, which is adjusted fielding minute pitching. You have line drive rate, ground ball to fly ball rate, et cetera. You know, uh, the metrics and MLB, they hate walks and they hate fly balls. In hoops, you're talking about points per possession or points per 100 possessions mm-hmm. on offense and on defense, your offensive and defense, defense efficiency numbers, your rebound rate, your assist to turnover ratio, your pace ratings. That's the key stats that go into the formulas that spit out point spreads and totals. So, again, it varies by sport. Each of those sports has a particular group of statistics that Mm -hmm. get factored into the point spread. So, in a normal world, this is how the market set lines. These are the key stats that they look at. And last but not least, number three, lines are still going to be set the same way in the post-COVID betting world. Okay. COVID certainly equals injury uncertainty. That's very common for NBA betters. Plenty for baseball and football betters, too. I'm not sure why people are so worried that, oh, if someone has a positive test, then they're going to be out. That happens Mm -hmm. in the normal world in sports. Someone gets injured in practice, and they're out. A couple of guys get injured, they're out. So I don't see that being any different. It happens already. And in the NBA, I mean, it's not uncommon. You'll see, you see a five-point move, you know, when a key guy sits. If LeBron tweaks his angle in warm-ups or Anthony Davis does or Kawhi does or so on and so forth. You can see enormous moves on the point spread and on the money line when players are out in the pre-COVID world. It'll be the same thing in the post-COVID world or in the, in the during-COVID world. Lines are going to be set the same way and... The players who are out are going to, you know, the market's going to adjust with that injury info like they do in regular times. So, so far, we haven't seen anything different. We're talking about how the lines are set, what stats they're looking at, and what's going to happen when guys get announced with positive tests affecting Mm -hmm. the team. All right. So, all of this so far all falls into the category of this is how it's done. And this is the normal world. And in a COVID world where the injuries aren't li- aren't as likely to take place on the court, you're likely to hear about it in off-court yeah. circumstances when players get positive. It's still the same story. The lines will adjust when players are hurt or, or sick. 
that's the way the markets work. So, so far, everything's in theory normal, except for that we're expecting more late injury information, which is really late illness information as players uh, yes. are restricted with, uh, with positive tests uh, from pollen COVID. What a great point, Teddy. That is so true. How is it any different from when you get tested positive as an athlete for COVID versus when you tweak your ankle during a game or something and you're out for a week or two or however many days. Super true. I think that's quite an overreaction um, that people have. And who knows, maybe a ton of players could test positive, but wh who really knows? Um, just want to say hi to Drew Martin, who just joined us. And Teddy, any advice for the NFL with preseason down to just two games? How does that change the NFL betting market? Does it at all for you? Well, it's going to change a lot. But we're mm -hmm. going to have to, you know, the the beauty of the preseason football, the beauty of betting preseason football is when you dig for information, you find it. <laughs> you find coaches' game plans. You find coordinators' game plans. Uh, and oftentimes, that'll give you a sense of uh, potential points spread success uh, in mm -hmm. the month of August. I love uh, preseason football for that specific reason. Now, this year, with only two games, you don't have that normal pattern, which means right. that, you know, the normal pattern is week one, the starters get on the field for a couple series. Week two, they play, you know, a quarter, quarter and a half. Week three is a regular season walkthrough. And week four uh, is, you know, scrub time. Um, mm -hmm. That's not going to be the case this year, which means that those coaches' quotes and those coordinator quotes are going to be even that more impactful because, some teams may view the preseason week one very differently than other teams. <laughs> uh, and if you can find that info early in the week, uh, you can get bets down. So uh, I, I do think it will affect the betting markets. I'm certain. And again, as we're talking about on this particular podcast, dealing with the uncertainty of COVID, there's uh -huh. change here. This is uncertainty of the NFL, um, which doesn't make the broader marketplace change. It just okay. means that info for the two-week NFL preseason opposed to the four-week NFL preseason, that info is going to make a big difference in how people bet. And I would expect that, you know, we all we often see significant line moves in the preseason. I would expect this to be one of those years where the lines are really jumping in August. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Hello, Carmine Bianco and mid-major Matt. Thanks for joining us. All right. Number four, Teddy. Yeah, we got all like the half the wager talk of sports memo gang in here. Yeah, because uh, we're all and we're all in the same boat. That's what I mean. I'm going to get to that. I, I left that to the end. And we're all in the same boat. But the truth is, as cappers, as odds makers, as wise guys and syndicates, as recreational players, we are all in the same boat. Doesn't matter what end of it you're on. <laughs> but we're in a situation where a normal pattern has now changed. So yes. we're all going to be making adjustments on the fly. So my issue number, uh, number four, I talked about the market weakness. Mm -hmm. In a normal world, this is my capping style. Okay. The biggest market, market weakness in the normal world is current form. And that means a team has developed a, statistic, a season long statistical profile. And when a team can consistently play above that form or below that form, there's money to be made, period. Mm -hmm. If it happens early in the season, the markets tend to catch up quickly. You know, some teams gets off, you know, they're red hot out of the gate and the markets don't snooze. But if it happens 10 games into an NBA season, think about the Bucks last year where they were the, the point spread monsters for four months. They're mediocre the first 10 games. The markets were another mediocre team and they were really good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it could be 10, 50 games through an MLB season. The Nats last year at the 50 game mark, everyone's talking about they were 19 and 31. They ended up winning the World Series. Okay. If you bet the Nats after the first 50 games, you made a boatload of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the market weakness in the normal world is current form when teams are consistently playing above or below their statistical profile. And that is not going to change in a COVID betting world. It's not. Okay. What could change is the consistently part of that. You know, the biggest weakness of the market is when a team consistently is playing five or ten points better than their power ratings would show. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's there's a potential in this 
COVID betting world for a little bit more randomness. Where, all right, yeah, they're playing better than their season-long statistical profile, but the consistency level isn't there. That's something that we all are going to have to look for early on. We don't know that it's not going to be there, but the potential for randomness is probably a notch or two greater. So when we find those consistent teams playing above or below, the idea is find them early and bet on or against them every single game you can. Yes, absolutely. All righty. Dave, thanks for joining us today. He said, you are so cute, Teddy. He meant to say it to you. Um, Number five, Teddy. I appreciate that. (laughs) So nuance is going to matter. All right. When you're looking at one of the things I look at very closely in MLB is what do teams do after they win the first two games of the series? Okay. You know, you can find teams, that, especially in the weekend series. They win Friday night, they win Saturday night, they go out and party Saturday night. They don't worry too much about Sundays. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are good teams to fade when they're two dollar chalk on Sundays. Other teams tend to be more focused on the sweep, and again, you see that by res- by examining the results closely, uh-huh. and you also see that by reading every quote you can find. Now, the markets don't know the difference about that Sunday matinee. Between, you know, the markets are like, this is pitcher A, this is pitcher B, these are the stats. We're not all that worried about the fact that they won the first two games of the series. And every previous time they won the first two games of the series, uh, they go on Sunday and they're coming up and their games are going under the total and, <laughs> and no one's showing. The markets and the betting, uh, the, the odds, not likely to reflect that situational betters will be aware of that so again we've talked about market weakness in the in the normal world current form and that doesn't change in terms of situational betters who many betters are that doesn't change that much either so again we're talking well this isn't that different that isn't that different yes not that different. Sorry, people are chatting in here now. Someone called me cute. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Teddy. All right, moving on to number six. Multitasking. Sure. So I want to talk about COVID injury protection. You know, when when okay. uh, and certainly when you're talking about season long bets, you're not going to get any. You know, if a team uh, has to deal with COVID and they have multiple stars that have tested positive, and that's going to that's going to ruin their season <laughs> or affect their season. So Mm -hmm. I'm not really going to talk about the season-long bets here. I am going to talk about how to protect yourself for any given week or any given game. In baseball, you can list pitchers. You can't do that in other sports. Um, Right. But listing pitchers is certainly something you might want to do (laughs) this MLB season. It doesn't help you when a key batter is out, but it reduces, you know, it, it eliminates the chance that if you think you're betting on an ace, and instead you're betting on a a, uh, a long reliever that's forced into a spot start, uh, it'll solve some of those problems. So you can certainly list mm-hmm. pitchers. But you can't do that in other sports. And inevitably, inevitably this season, you're going to be on the wrong side of some injury information or some COVID information. Yep. It's just, uh, and when it happens, you say, damn it. But you don't say, oh, everything I'm doing has been completely wrong. I'm going to forget all, all my basics. And, you know, some of the options to reduce that. All right. One, bet closer to kickoff or tip off. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really the option that you have. Or, again, don't freak out about it if you're on the wrong side of some of these. Players are going to unexpectedly sit. It happens across sports. It's likely to happen a little bit more in the COVID world. So you say, well, where can I find some edges? Well, there's going to be edges with deeper. It's hard to quantify. What is a deeper team? How much is a deep team worth (laughs) against the spread? That, of course, when it's hard to quantify, it makes it difficult for the broader betting markets to factor in. We'll talk about the wise guy money in just a moment. But there's going to be some of this stuff that's all nuance that you can't really say, well, the fact that they're a deeper team makes them a point better or <laughs> a point and a half better than they would be, even if I'm measuring starters versus starters, just because they're deep. 
But the bottom line is, there at least is some chance to get, uh, there's some edge with the backing a deep team, and there are some options you have for betting. You know, normally I like to bet very, very early <laughs> if I can, you know, especially yeah. with the lines that are going to move. In the, uh, in the betting during COVID, I would tend to think that I'll be waiting until closer to kickoff slash tip off slash first pitch to get a lot mm-hmm. of my bets down. Okay. Um, Mid Major Matt brought up a good point. Uh, he said, I thought I read MLB won't be reporting positive COVID tests. Do we think NFL will be that way? I think I heard some MLB players test positive for COVID. I mean, I don't think specifically they've said who, but. Are they not doing that during the season? There will be an injury report of one sort or another. And whether oh. a player has COVID or whether a player has listened to his illness or whatever. Yeah. Injury, uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever the differentiation is going to be, mm-hmm. the players who are not playing will still be announced as being out. <laughs> okay. Um, and I would expect that even though there was likely to be more injury info during the day, perhaps, than there is in a normal mm-hmm. circumstance, um, I still think that we have a – we're going to know who's going to play and who's not going to play before first pitch, the tip-off, mm-hmm. kick-off, et cetera. Um, I'm, I'm fairly I'm, – I'm pretty confident of that. Okay. Yes, good. All right, moving on to number seven. Siete. The wise guys. Sure. And, and we've talked about this a fair bit on the show, but it's important uh, through, through these 101s. But it's important to say it again and again, all right? The public money does not affect point spreads, all right? Mm-hmm. Point spreads are designed to beat syndicates, to beat wise guys. Okay. The wise guy money is still there, all right? Individual bettors may have withdrawn some cash to make it through the down times. You know, casual bettors, even some professional bettors are taking money out of their bankroll to get through these months. But mm-hmm. syndicates, they're well-funded. They don't, they're, they're not uh, in position where they're needing cash withdrawals to pay expenses. I expect the syndicate money to be there every bit as much this fall as it's been in, you know, as it was before uh, the lockdown. Um, and that means if there's syndicates money, the markets are going to move. That's what they do. So in terms of all, oh, are the markets going to behave in comparable fashion? Mm-hmm. Probably, <laughs> you know, probably so. Because again, the there may be a little bit less recreational money, but there'll still be plenty of recreational money. But the key is the wise guy money is still there. And as long as the wise guy money is still there, the markets are going to move quickly and the odds makers are catering uh, in terms of who they're trying to beat with, the, uh, with their lines. They don't worry about the public. They're trying to beat the wise guys. So that, again, doesn't change. Good point. All right, moving on to Ocho, eight. So really, this comes down to a single question. Mm -hmm. Who can adjust on the fly better? Because that's what this is going to be all about. How do neutral floors without fans affect pace? Do you Mm -hmm. know, Minty? No. I have an idea. In theory, the totals are supposed to be a little bit lower. <laughs> okay. Is that going to play out the way the theory works? We'll see. Well, real quickly, Ooh. I sorry, Teddy, to interrupt you. Um, fans you can, not it's just having the can. <laughs> not having fans in the stand. I hear. I mean, I've never been an athlete at all throughout school or anything, but I hear fans are kind of just white noise to you in the background until you you know, run back to home base or make that touchdown or, or shoot that last shot. Like I hear you don't really hear the crowd until the very end anyway. So will it really affect how like athletes will play? All kinds of issues. Okay. So uh, okay. Uh, the, the answer to that is yes. All right. Crowd okay. noise affects you on defense, uh, okay. affects you on offense when you're trying to call plays or trying to okay. call an audible at the line of scrimmage. Um, right. You know, the defense is going crazy and it's third, you know, or the crowd's going crazy. It's third down. Yeah, that affects the offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're in the NBA and you're, the crowd goes crazy and you're, you you know, get a steal and a block and a slam and the opposing coach has to t- call timeout because the crowd is so nuts, now maybe doesn't mm-hmm. have to call timeout. <laughs> okay. you know, and then you say that timeout for the end of the game. 
Um, mm-hmm. There and, and the uh, something that I haven't heard much talked about, but again, when the crowd is flowing, the pace mm-hmm. flows. If the crowd okay. is there's no crowd, does the pace slow down? You know, is the home field advantage worth anything without fans? Mm-hmm. Okay, is there a home field advantage for the home team on a neutral floor? And MLB, is it a disadvantage to be traveling? Is it an advantage to be traveling? The answers to all of these questions, you know, are very, very clearly, we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. The odds makers don't know. The syndicates don't know. Nobody knows. And this is just, I mean, I can think of, I I wasn't trying to put 50 questions down here, but I was like, you can put 50 questions down here. Mm -hmm. So when we know that we don't know, okay, the answers are... (laughs) There may be league-wide trends that develop. Mm -hmm. There may be team-specific trends that develop. You know, this team plays well in this role. That team doesn't play well in that role. Uh, All teams in the league are playing well uh, given this spot. Uh, Teams are not playing well given that spot. But on the other hand, there's a reasonable potential for not that many trends to actually work this sports season and lots and lots of static. I'm going to move on to nine right here because static is an important concept to talk about when it comes to looking at trends and angles. Okay. If you look for trends and angles, you will always find them. Always. If you do any kind of, a, yep. any, I mean, if, if any kind of a statistical database work, you know, wow, wow. Oh, wow. Really? Wow. That cash yeah. 70% of the time. The questions, okay, after finding those trends and angles are twofold. One, are they meaningful in any way? (laughs) Or are they just a random, something that happened in the past that was a little bit random? Two, are they predictive in any way moving forward? Or are they just static? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, so wise guys love them statistical profiles. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Who's got the edge here? Okay. Wise guys, the statistical profiles or betters who are reading the beat writers and watching the games, getting all the nuance. That's what I do. I'm not a statistical profile guy. I look at them. I want to be aware of them. But my, am I going to bet this game tonight is based on my personal take on yep. all the information I've had surrounding that team, which includes a lot of reading and a lot of watching. That allows me, in theory, to pick up the nuance. I'm not convinced that this statistical profile is going to work the same way this year, and there may be a whole lot of static and not that many trends. So, personally, it's something I'm going to be aware of, something I'm going to be okay. watching, and I'm going to be watching for it in a is this meaningful and future predictive in any way, or is it just reflecting what we've seen without any potential uh, future uh, implications? So um, the trends and angles will be there. Figuring out if they're meaningful or not is, again, going to be a case where we're all adjusting on the fly, and we're just going to have to see. Hey, this is something you want to pay a lot of attention to? Ooh, this looked good, but now it's not really worth anything. It hasn't really panned out. So... Um, mm-hmm. and, and again, with the shortened seasons, everyone's going to be trying to be doing this very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see trends <laughs> flying back and forth. This trend went 10 and 0, and now it goes 0 and 10 the next, you know, I mean, stuff like that. Where okay. um, the betting angles may not be. This is one area that I think that I'm personally very very aware of going in is that the angles and trends may not be as predictive as they've been in years past makes sense all right this is top 10 tips by teddy we are on number 10 now yeah but you know me i always put 11 in i know there's always i was gonna surprise you at the end okay (laughs) (laughs) this one goes to 11 yeah Yeah. Um, all right number 10 teddy all right. So uh, and I, here I just I, I put in the, the famous quote from uh, former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld talking about uh, the U.S. and Iraq back in the day. Mm-hmm. And here's the quote. I actually went and <laughs> there are no knowns, things that we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. There are some things 
that we know we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know that we don't know. Oh my God, I had no ears. Okay. <laughs> again, it, it makes sense. It does. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, you know, it's, it may not be worded the best, uh, the best way, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, it makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. This is what we know we don't know. This is what we know that we don't know. <laughs> this is what we know that we know. This is what we know that we don't know, but we don't know yet what we don't know that we're going right. to need to know. And that is very real when it comes mm -hmm. to handicapping post COVID. Okay. Adjusting on the fly, keeping true to your handicapping principles, but mm -hmm. being aware that there are going to be things that are going to be different that we don't know about yet and being open to adjusting for whatever those things turn out to be. Um, there's my Donald Ronsfeld quote. <laughs> okay, there we go. go. And number 11, surprise, you thought we were done. We're not done yet. Number 11, Teddy, the last tip that we always say after every 101, 102 video. I don't always say it. I don't always use it last, but in, in, putting, this, in putting this together, I'm like this, I have to put it together like this and this has to be said at the end. Okay. The fundamentals don't change. We're all in the same boat. What are the fundamentals? Have more outs. Line shop. <laughs> have mm -hmm. more outs. If you have one account, get two. If you have two accounts, get four. If you have four accounts, get eight. If you have eight accounts, get 16. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, line shop sure is important. To shop for those lines, those half points. You don't want to lay uh, 120 in a baseball game when you can lay 118. You don't want to take plus 120. You can take plus 122. Those little consistent performances that you put together with the fundamentals where you're, you know, uh, performance wasn't the right word. I don't know where I got that from. But the, I mean, the, the, the fundamentals just don't change. So there's going to be a lot more nuance. There's going to be plenty of wise guy money. There's going to be developing trends and angles that people will be paying attention to. But the fundamentals of every bet you make, your line shopping, you're having the opportunity to, to get a half point better or a point better of it, side total, whatever. When you're winning games by the hook or pushing instead of losing games by the hook, it makes an enormous difference to your psychology. It makes an enormous difference to your bankroll. And it makes an enormous difference in your ability to handicap consistently one day to the next. Man, you win that usually. There's there's no better feeling. Uh, there's a, you know whatever. There aren't many better feelings than uh -huh. you know that you found a line that was not widely available, and uh -huh. that made the difference between you winning your bet and you pushing, or you pushing and losing, and your buddies all right. lost, and you won that bet, and you go into that next day like, yeah, man, I feel good about this. Your energy is there. Your confidence is there. You understand it. That is an absolute boost to your handicapping when you're winning games like that instead of losing games like that. And the only way to do it, have more outs and shop for the Absolutely. best number. All right. Good advice as always. Thank you so much, Teddy. And thank you, everybody, for watching and listening and all your questions. You guys got me distracted between Teddy and then the chat, but it was awesome. Thank you guys for joining, as always, every week. Don't forget to subscribe to Wager Talk TV on YouTube and follow Teddy on Twitter. I was going to say Instagram, <laughs> at Teddy underscore covers and on Wager Talk at Wager Talk. Bye, guys. Thank you, Teddy. Cheers.